just that I have been watching NASCAR for half my life, and we've had a new point system and a new way for crowning a champion for three years, and mm-hmm. I just figured it out. Okay. Well, like, I, I would watch the last 10 races of every season being like, what the hell is going on? How do we get a champ? Let's say, like, the past, like, you're talking about the Jimmy Johnson years, or are you talking about before then? I'm talking about since, like, 2018. Okay. Yeah. I mean, which encompasses the Jimmy Johnson years, because Jimmy Johnson is just that good. Mm-hmm. Just that dude. Anyway, so... Do you know how many um, we gonna play? Twenty questions. No, a- ask. Okay, twenty questions. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there are thirty six races in NASCAR season. Okay. Okay. They have shortened the field from forty three to forty with thirty six charters. Mm-hmm. Okay. A charter basically gives you the rights to race in every single race. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you are non chartered, you do not have that same luxury. Right. Okay. And there's a process for getting chartered, which can include buying one on the open market, among other things. So like Joe Gibbs Racing is chartered. Roush Racing is chartered. Right. Um, Levine Family Racing is not. Right? There's a reason I'm getting to that. But 43 to 40, 36 races, 36 charters, 40, give or take, dudes can just kind of come in and try to compete. And if you finish in the bottom three of the charter for like three straight years, they can pull your charter because you know, in ownership points, not in, you know, uh, raising points. So basically you got to be in good standing. You got to do all these other things. Cause NASCAR is terrifically insular. So you have to be good enough to stay racing. So as so, an organization, as an organization, as an organization, okay. right. So you cannot be incompetent. Okay. Right? You can't just be rich. Right. Okay. Exactly. 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 Can't just be rich. So, Along with that, the way to win the cup is to qualify for the playoffs, which sounds weird about racing, but whatever. Because it used to be accumulate the most points throughout the season. You win. Mm -hmm. No. You accumulate points. People hate when you win on points. Right. Right. Well, 36 races, and that's racing, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. So over the course of the first 26 races, which is the regular season, if you... Win a race, basically qualify to get in. Right. That's one way to get into the playoffs, win a race. Okay. The other way is to accumulate, you know, the most points, and then you get in. And then in those 10 playoff races, you basically got four rounds. Okay. In those four rounds, you go from 16 cars to eliminate it to 12, to eliminate it to eight, to eliminate it to four for the fourth round. Mm-hmm. And then in the fourth round, it's a free for all. And the person the, of those four cars, the one that finishes in front of the other three, is the cup champ. I see. It took me three years to figure this out, like to actually like nail it down. Because I don't all, want it so hard. You explained it to me. I got the first time. Right. And then everybody's racing in all 36 of those races, though. That's what I was. OK. Yeah. All right. And you still get big money for this because if nothing else, NASCAR is about the advertisers. Mm-hmm. OK. So we want them to get their shine. And if you win one of these playoff races, the purse can be a little bit larger. So it's more incentive for you to win these races at the end. Okay? But you're still going to have, more often than not, your usual suspects right. at the end. Kyle Busch, Jimmy Johnson, Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick. Mm-hmm. But to add to this intrigue this year, Daytona 500, we have a pol- qualifying that was today when we're recording this Sunday. And I'm, I am a nerd, so I watch qualifying. Okay? Dude sitting on top of the pole was let go by Roush Racing in October. They refused to pick up his two-year extension, which is kind of a faux pas. And we was like, yo, what are you doing? So my man got a new ride, and get a new ride qualifies with the pole in Daytona, which mm-hmm. is not a small thing. It's called the Great American Race for a reason. But finishing ninth is a fellow by the name of Christopher Bell. Mm-hmm. Christopher Bell is from Norman, Oklahoma, and he has had a fast rise up the racing circuit to getting his ride with Levi and Family Racing, right. who I mentioned earlier, who doesn't have a charter, but they're going to try to get this dude a rookie season because he's that good. I bring that up because Chris Bell won three Chili Bowl Nationals in a row and was nearly beaten out of his fourth, which would have been a record, this year by Kyle Larson. So he goes from that January to the Great American Race in February, and he is ninth in the poll. 
So if my man has a great showing, mm-hmm. the best rookie driver in NASCAR would be from Norman, Oklahoma, which I found wild interesting. No, that's promising. However. Are you telling me that Oklahoma could have a, a champion sometime soon? Well, I, first off, we get champions all the time. Well, but, but in NASCAR? But in NASCAR, no. I mean, you know, like more than that, I'm telling you that a dude from Oklahoma could end up in the same name recognition category as Rusty Martin, as Jeff Gordon, as junior and senior. Oh, you're saying this dude is, is that good? Mm. If he puts it together this year in his rookie season? Because the dude won the Camping World Truck Series. He's won seven Xfinity races. Oh, so wait. All right, no, all right. This dude is already good. Now he's driving NASCAR. Right. Okay. And it is it is like jumping from AAA to major leagues. It's not an easy jump. Mm. But if you can get up there and do something, like win a race, or have a great showing in Daytona, yeah, you're on your way. And then you're creating name recognition off of purely being able to drive, which is not something we're used to being able to say, mm-hmm. right? You're usually somebody's kid. Or you came up uh, somebody's uncle, nephew, whatever. Junior. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Right, no. The greatest example of this. Dude's an, uh, ostensibly nobody from nowhere. Right. right. Oklahoma. However, you know, Norman. great. the, the great truth of, of racing is you got to have money. money. Right. Which is why, like, if I ever got, like, rich, rich, or mm-hmm. you got rich, rich, we probably still wouldn't be rich enough to, like, run a NASCAR uh, team. Probably wouldn't. I don't know what were we talking about this. How much money it would take for us to uh, to successfully run a? I think you, at the time we were talking about like Formula One. Okay. No, we don't have enough money. Yeah. But it'd be nice if we did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't actually. I just want to Joe Gibbs it. That's all I want to do. I say all I want to do as if Joe Gibbs racing is not one of the. Pre- I was about to say like racing all, operations on earth. All I want to do is be Joe Gibbs racing. Right. It's, look. I want my four-man team. Oh, that's the other thing. You got a hard cap now because you used to could have like a fifth driver if you wanted. Now you hard capped it four mm. on your team. And uh, for those of you that are interested, uh, Christopher Bell is going to run the 95 Toyota Camry on, on Saturday. I'm such a nerd. Um, yes. I love racing. No. I want to go fast. When we go do these remotes uh, in McAllister, I'm always looking at the Mustangs. And I'm looking at other vehicles. Yo, that somebody got give this somebody horsepower. give this dude a, a ride along. Horsepower. Not no F a ride along. Hallett F a motor- ride along. Give give me give me the wheel. Folks at Hallett, please uh what is it uh Mustangs at Hallett or whatever. Please give this give this <gasps> Harlan, I beg you, Har- give this man <laughs> Harlan Harlan coaches uh Harlan is, is is does the Pat Jones show. Okay. Yeah, he he and coach pals. I don't. I don't think he got room for me. I don't even get invited to the Kia remotes. Mm. That was a that was a Coach Jones thing too. Damn, you can't even get a Kia. Nah, man. Mm. Like I would be reading, doing the race forty seven, forty seven South Yale, and I couldn't. They wouldn't even give me no shine. Well, somebody. I don't know what it is, man. Dealers just don't want to show me no love. Hopefully, this changes it. I know, and, right? uh, and when and when it does change, take me with you. <laughs> The man who's got he's got wheels and a storage unit he will never use. Hey, <laughs> we don't need to, we don't need to talk about my my, my twenty sets of Watanabe's that I got in the, uh my 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 Inky Classics that I got. So Jerry and Patrick were doing the what's the most uh, surprising thing you've ever learned about RJ bit and Jerry was like the the pistol certification kind of kind of threw me. Mm-hmm. Um, Jerry still hadn't read my book. I was about to say I knew because I read your book. Right. So, you know. But Patrick says ASC and brakes and suspension. I was like, that's what it that's what it does for you? That okay, cool. And then Jerry's like, well, why don't we open a garage? Because I don't turn wrenches. Uh, no. Never. She's <laughs> like, oh, turn wrenches no more, dog. I turn wrenches for me. Right? And even then, even then, I don't really want to do it. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. I take my stuff to the dealership. You, you want to know to, my, No, go ahead. You go to the dealership? Mm-hmm. And let them handle it. Right. I tell you what my favorite uh my favorite pastime is is somebody telling me that something's wrong with their car. I'm like, yeah. Shame. I, not only not only that, it's like, yeah, I could you know I could probably if if I did it, it'd probably be thirty minutes in and out. Wouldn't cost you a cent. Also, oh the the part the dealership said that part cost a thousand dollars. 
pull it up on whatever site. I don't know. Rock Auto. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no that that's a, that that part costs like fifteen dollars. That co- that part costs as much as baby's breath and a firm handshake. <laughs> Oh, well, I didn't know. Of course not. Mm -mm. It's cold outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or my favorite, like, every once in a while, I get a dude be like, you ran out your studio? Hell no. Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) Not for hire, sir. First off, what if I said, hey, can I come to your house? Oh, man. And then and then we got folks to be like, yo, can I use your garage? I I punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. I won't actually punch you in the face. I just mean like he will punch you in the face. Point is, if you had a professional racing garage, the only people that would be allowed in it are your close, 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 close friends Mm -hmm. and family. And even that family, they might have to pass a quiz. And famous people. If Joe Gibbs famous people I was about to say if Joe Gibbs showed up, I was like, hey man, we we desperately need this garage. Yes, Joe Gibbs. Right. Yes, you can. Right. And then I need I need to gram it. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. Because I need I need the clout from all of this. From all of this. Speaking of which, uh, good place to wrap up the podcast. Yeah. Uh, there was some Baker Mayfield, like, for real stuff. Can that, we can we talk about this? No, we can't. I'm uh, just teasing it so we can end it right all now. All right, cool. 